No part has been taken off, and nothing has been added to the story. Pay close attention as I proceed with the reading. That particular day, I returned home from attending church, well into the dark hours. It was a Saturday, and we had planned to hold a Bible study with the local teenagers in our church. Because it was already so late, I didn't want to wake up my kids or my husband, so I went to bed as soon as I arrived home and went to sleep. On top of that, we've been working hard to get ready for the church revival that will take place the following week. This left me completely exhausted. In my dream, I saw myself traveling over a desolate landscape that resembled a desert. It was a sluggish transition. I looked down and saw that I had feathers growing on my back, and I also observed that I had the ability to fly. I couldn't contain my excitement, and I told myself, let me fly back home. On the contrary, I had no control over the direction I was headed in. I had the impression that I was being guided by some external force. It took me all the way around the world. I traveled in the air for a very protracted period of time. However, I was unable to locate or track down any living thing anywhere in the world. No person, no animal, no vegetation. The whole surface of the planet sustained catastrophic damage. The rivers and the sea were both drained and dried up in the process. I looked around, and there were human skulls lying about in every direction. Likewise animals. All the buildings and structures had fallen to the ground. Every location I visited was in disarray. Everything that was metallic, including cars and planes, had a complete rust coating. The power lines were all down since the poles had all fallen over. Many trees and crops were destroyed by the fire, and there was total silence on the earth. After that, the same force that was driving me to fly brought me back to the precise position it picked me up in the first place. Then, all of a sudden, I sprang awake from the dream I had been having. When I thought back on what had happened in my dream, I developed a feeling of fear within me. Because I did not want to rouse my spouse from his sleep, I maintained my silence. I prayed in a low voice to God, and I rebuked the dream that had come to me. After a while, I was able to fall back asleep. I had this second dream, and in it, I encountered an angel of the Lord, riding a white horse. This time, though, he was speaking to me. Frames of fire filled his eyes. He carried me like a baby on his shoulder, and we rode on the horse. But he did not allow me to sit on the horse. Then, he led me to the summit of a very tall skyscraper, and I can honestly tell that it was the tallest structure I had ever seen in my life. As we neared the peak, the angel warned me to keep my eyes peeled for the incredible sight that awaited us. Unfortunately, I can only recall certain details, and therefore I will limit my account to those. The angel was very attentive in all that he did. He stepped behind me and firmly gripped my shoulder. Then I heard him pray for a very long time while holding me. I am not sure whether or not what he was saying are prayers, but the most of what he said was, Lord, have compassion on earth, and it was repeated multiple times. At some point he said, Lord, your judgments are just. Have your way, Lord, and make your will known here on earth. As far as I could tell, the angel seemed sorrowful, but I couldn't pinpoint the source of his distress. He kept silence for a while, and he asked me if I was ready to see what I was meant to see. Then I nodded my head, because I was shaking so much that I couldn't even speak. It seemed like something weird was going to take place, 
and the angel had tried to stop it through his prayers. But what was written, was written. The atmosphere all around me gave the impression that something strange was about to take place. At that moment, the angel spoke to me and reassured me, saying in a whisper, Jesus loves you, and you must not allow yourself to become disheartened. Now, lift your head up and discern for yourself what the situation is like. Then I saw a different angel descend from the heavens with a bowl in his hand, and he began to pour something down onto the earth. What was that? I asked the angel who was with me, and he declared that the bowl was filled to the brim with the wrath of God. After that, I noticed three peculiar animals. A dragon appeared before my eyes. A two-headed eagle appeared before me. And I also saw a bald eagle. The three creatures were clustered together on the riverbank. And it appeared as though they were trying to drink from the water, but were being blocked. It was not entirely clear what it was that was keeping them from approaching the river in order to drink from it. At first, I wasn't entirely <coughs> sure what it meant or how to interpret it. But all of a sudden, I had the realization that the eagle with two heads was attempting to scare away the bald eagle. They struggled against one another for some time. But the dragon did not move from his position. It kept quiet and watched them. Then all of a sudden, I noticed a robust breeze blowing from the direction of the river, and as a result, they flew away to their natural habitat. The eagle with two heads took off for its native eastern territory. The dragon, too, took off in that same direction. However, the bald eagle flew off to the north. Then after a while, I saw the dragon and the double-headed eagle coming from the eastern hemisphere. The dragon bestowed upon the two-headed eagle not only his own power, but also a horn that stood for the dragon's dominion over the world. It was clear that they shared a same bond. And every other living thing showed there to show their support for the eagle with two heads. They both took off and headed in a direction toward the north, which was the location of the bald eagle's home. The northern regions were home to a significant population of bald-headed eagles. They possessed a great deal of strength and vigilantly guarded their territories. The dragon stood behind the double-headed eagle, and the eagle with two heads and his followers engaged in battle with the eagles with bald heads. Before I was aware of what was going on, it had escalated into a really challenging fight that nobody wanted to get involved in. When the two-headed eagle began to experience periods of weakness, it would seek support from the dragon. The dragon was seen flying around the planet while making a threat that everyone who joined the bald eagle's campaign will meet their final demise. In point of fact, he threatened that they would be obliterated from the face of the earth as if they had never been there in the first place. At some point, hostilities broke out on a global scale and continued on for several years. Once more, the dragon allied itself with the two-headed eagle in an effort to defeat their enemies. They were an extremely formidable and hard-to-beat combined force. All of the other animals who believed that their lives could be in danger if the two-headed eagle was not kept in check, provided the bald eagle with a significant amount of support. Due to the fact that no one genuinely decided to be subordinate to any other animal, there was a considerable amount of carnage. No kingdom was prepared to submit to the authority of the other kingdoms. Everyone was striving to choose a side because those who did not choose a side faced a terrible outcome. Those who did not choose a side faced a devastating destruction. At the beginning of the conflict, the fighting took place on the shores of the bald eagle. But in the end, 
both the dragon and the eagle with two heads manage to make their way into the territory of the bald eagle. In fact, this was the spark that ignited the war's escalation. I turned around to face the angel that had been standing behind me and asked, Who are these mysterious creatures? And what does this imply? This seems like a movie, right? After then, he requested that I turn around once more and carefully observe what was happening. When I did, I saw everything transform. Those creatures had suddenly transformed into humans. It was a metaphor for the eventual doom of humanity on Earth. The three animals represented three world leaders. The battle proceeded further. After that, I noticed that the economy of the entire world had begun to deteriorate. The poor suffered greatly since they were never able to afford the things that they desired because of the general rise in the cost of goods and services. They had to compete with one another, even for access to the most fundamental conveniences. After then, nothing in the entire universe made any sense. The leaders were at a loss for action. There was widespread upheaval among lawmakers. It appeared as though everything was going completely off the rails. It appeared that nothing in the world was operating properly anymore because everyone and everything was involved in the battle. Because hunger struck at such a rapid pace, everybody was scrambling to make meaning out of their lives. And at the same time, they were praying for divine intervention in the situation. Because it no longer mattered who was successful in business, the value of each and every currency in the world plummeted to an all-time low. It evolved into a competition to see who could survive and thrive the longest. With only the most powerful competitors making serious efforts to advance their position and obtain an advantage in any and all possible ways. I was shocked to hear a loud explosion coming from a considerable distance. One more time, I heard it again. This time around, the heavens were opened. And I was able to witness that several people started vanishing one after the other in quick succession. In point of fact, if a human being or similar creature were to vanish, the only thing that would be left behind would be the clothes that they were wearing. A great number of people disappeared into the cloud, leaving no record of the time they had spent on Earth. This went on for an extremely brief amount of time. And the heavens were closed again. There were still a great number of individuals left on Earth. After the righteous had been taken to heaven in the rapture, another dominant figure that resembled the beast and with a significant deal of power emerged in the world. This caused them a great deal of suffering. The new beast eventually established itself as the dominant power in the world. Because he dealt so cruelly with everyone he met and those who were left behind, he was oblivious to everyone around him. Families were kept apart from one another. The beast established a hierarchy, and anyone who survived became his slaves in the new order. The angel eventually transformed me like a bride, going to meet the groom, and took me to heaven. There, I came face to face with those who had achieved their goal of reaching heaven. It was a tranquil setting where there was an abundance of love, pleasure, and tranquility to be found there. One didn't even have to speak before being understood. There was an innate comprehension that developed out of the sincere affection that existed between the two parties. Everyone existed in harmony. It was nothing compared to the turmoil going on in the world. Everyone was overcome with happiness, and their smiles and laughter reflected the light that comes from the Creator Himself. I was guided in the exact path of my thoughts. It was there that I came face to face with Jesus, 
who was surrounded by other righteous individuals. He went from there and came closer to me. And he told me that I needed to take a message to the world so that they may be saved from the endless doom that was coming to them. He said that I needed to save them from the eternal disaster that was coming. He assured me that he had prepared a dwelling for every soul. And that everyone has a place in his numerous palaces, with the sole exception of those who have rejected him altogether. He referred to me as his daughter numerous times while we traveled through the heavens. I had the impression that I already belonged to him. Suddenly, the metaphor of Jesus as the church's husband made more sense to me. It was a really extended period of time spent sleeping. When I finally opened my eyes, I had already witnessed more than enough to warrant my belief that the return of Jesus is drawing near. Jesus had just given me the last of his instructions, and I was to carry them out without holding back in any way. It was not because of his commandments, but rather because of the love he had for all people and the desire he had for them to be saved from the anguish of hell and enter heaven instead. Now, this is my own personal interpretation of my dream, based on the information that I have gained. I am open to having my understanding of this dream revised by anyone who is listening to this message. In addition, it would make me very glad if your audience members could also offer an interpretation, just in case I get mine wrong. The dragon that I saw in my dream was a metaphor for China. The bald eagle is a representation of the United States of America, while the double-headed eagle represents Russia. It's likely that China and Russia will join forces to counter the United States. And this is what will trigger World War III. The rapture would take place at this time, at which point the righteous would be transported to heaven, while the wicked would be left behind on earth to battle with the Antichrist, who was symbolized in the dream by the beast. This is what I have understood. I would ask that you publish this on your channel so that anyone who watches it can provide a more in-depth explanation of what is going on. I beg the Lord to have mercy on each and every one of you. God bless everybody.